According to a 2019 PubMed review article, annually, the prevalence of low back pain in the general U.S. adult population is between 10 and 30 percent, and the lifetime prevalence of U.S. adults is as high as 65 to 80 percent. That means about 20% of adults in North America are currently suffering from back pain, and about 75% will have some sort of significant back pain, likely to last up to six weeks at some point in their lives. That's a lot of people with a lot of back pain, a condition that can range from extremely debilitating to slightly annoying. Regardless of the severity, it's definitely not a good thing. Question is, what to do about it and can it be prevented? From my experience as a surgeon, ex-varsity athlete and fitness trainer, I'd say that there is a lot that we can do to treat back pain and yes, I'd say the majority of back pain that people suffer from can be prevented. So today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the most common causes of lower back pain and then we will discuss treatment options and prevention techniques. So what are some of the causes of lower back pain? First of all, on the more serious side, if a person has a compression of a nerve root or compression of the spinal cord itself, then back pain can result, but this pain will be accompanied by both pain and dysfunction of the legs as well, and sometimes even bowel or bladder dysfunction. But if we're talking about uncomplicated low back pain here, there are a few general conditions that can cause this. Number one. A herniated disc is when the soft tissue between adjacent vertebrae and the spine becomes compressed beyond its capacity and their contents are ruptured. A herniated disc can occur if there is a sudden forward flexion of the spine under load, like what might happen in a car accident. Number two, degenerative disc disease occurs when the discs in the spine become less hydrated and lose their cushioning and shock absorbing abilities. This often occurs as we age, but could also be precipitated by an injury, such as a disc herniation, as previously stated. Number three, osteoarthritis is a condition that occurs when the cartilage in the joints of the spine breaks down. This can be genetic, it can happen with age, or it can be a result of trauma that has occurred in the past. With each of these conditions, it is important to note that unless the back pain is also accompanied by a loss of sensation or motor function in the lower extremities or bowel or bladder dysfunction, then it's not a surgical issue. We would manage the symptoms and or recommend movement therapy in other words, exercise. Now, obviously, these are not the only causes of back pain, nor are they even the most common. Right now, I wanna talk about what I see most often with regard to lower back pain as an orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. These points may or may not surprise you. The first common contributor to mechanical back pain that is not a result of nerve or spinal cord compression is poor posture. This is often precipitated by inactivity and or sitting for extended periods of time. Think of sitting as a non-active repetitive strain injury. Hunching forward, neck and chin jutting out. Yes, your muscles work when you sit to keep you in a certain position as a result of the sustained positions that can lead to pain. Another thing a person might not think about when it comes to back pain or any other kind of muscular pain for that matter is getting enough water. Many of us frequently walk around dehydrated. Simple habits like not drinking enough water in combination with drinking too much coffee or alcohol or drinking carbonated soda instead of water can lead to dehydration. And even a very slight amount of dehydration can be problematic. Yet another thing that may cause lower back pain is stress. Yes, stress. Clinical studies have shown that stress, anxiety, and depression are linked to lower back pain and other kinds of pain such as headaches, upper back, neck, and shoulder pain as well. Consider that depression, anxiety, and stress can raise your blood pressure, increase your breathing and heart rate, and increase muscular tension overall. Too much muscular tension over time isn't good for the body and pain might be the result. Your body is signaling to you that something is wrong. Stress, anxiety, and depression can also affect your hormones, which in turn can lead to sleeping problems, changes in appetite, musculoskeletal symptoms, and psychological problems as well. In these cases, addressing the back pain is not just physical, but also a mental and emotional challenge. It is also important to note that repetitive stress due to certain physical activities that recur over time, anything that may put your body out of alignment in general, like 
carrying a baby on one side of the body or working on an assembly line, playing particular sports like baseball, hockey, or golf, where you tend to move a certain way all the time on a certain side, might lead to a repetitive muscular strain or tendon irritation. Muscles respond to the stimuli placed on them, whether it's a static hold or a dynamic movement. With repetitive movements, the body gets tugged in ways it was never intended with a frequency or a volume that is beyond its ability to recover. Of course, another potential cause of back pain is simply muscular strain. This occurs when muscles in the lower back are either overused or underprepared for a certain kind of activity. This happens all the time, and for many of us, we fit into the underprepared category. With athletes, on the other hand, it is often from overuse. But in either case, it's not good. More importantly is the consideration that back pain is multifactorial, often combining several of the previously mentioned causes. So now that we know some of the most common causes of lower back pain, let's talk about treatment. If you are diagnosed with a compression issue that is altering neurological function, well, the fix is likely surgical. Otherwise, and I'd say this for over 90% of the people with back pain, the solution is pretty simple in theory, especially once you get past the acute phase. If the pain is extreme, see your physiotherapist who will help get you mobile again by guiding you through exercise and or manual therapy like massage, or your doctor who may use medications for a short period of time to settle the pain. After that, if we take the causes listed earlier, all we have to do is reverse engineer them to treat the problems that cause the pain. This approach applies to anyone with transient mechanical back pain affecting the low back. If this approach is not effective for your back pain symptoms, you should consider consultation with a physician who specializes in the spine to obtain further guidance on treatment. And remember, what's good for treatment is also key for prevention. So even if you don't currently have back pain, listen carefully. The most important thing a person can do to treat and prevent lower back pain is to move often throughout the day in order to keep your body mobile and supple. Take frequent breaks, stretching, squatting, standing, sitting in different positions, just walking around even if it's in the office or at home. Try to be generally active, including activities like jogging, cycling, swimming, dancing, gardening, anything that you enjoy that gets you moving more. All of this will go a long way to helping you stay healthy and pain free. Remember that the little things, the small seemingly insignificant amounts of physical activity actually matter. Another way to treat and prevent back pain is to exercise with the intention of balancing out your body and strengthening weak areas. Besides the general do your cardio and strength work, a person must intentionally aim to train less used muscles to keep things in check. For most of us, our workouts are rather general in nature. Sit too much, posture exercises are important. Work on an assembly line, make sure both sides of the body are equal in strength. If you don't know where to start, I'll provide some exercise options shortly. Because we know that depression and anxiety and stress are very common contributing factors to lower back pain, it makes sense to include calming and relaxation practices into your daily routine, such as meditation, positive affirmation, yoga, and other mindfulness practices. I believe that most of us don't even consider this connection. So if you're having back pain and nothing you do seems to be helping, consider seeing a specialist in this area. A counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, etc., would prove very helpful. For athletes and fitness enthusiasts, I'd highly recommend cross training. Change things up as much as possible. Vary your workouts and activities to prevent any overuse issues. Lastly, remember to drink enough water. Read the article I have listed in the description to learn more about how much water you actually need on a day-to-day -day basis. And with that, we will now turn to exercise, movements everyone should be doing on a regular basis in order to keep the body healthy and strong. First, I want you to consider that we spend most of our time either seated or forward focused. Hence the fact that most of our actions tend to be to the front, which means that the muscles on the front of the body are often more developed than those on the back. I like to recommend to almost everyone that you should add strength exercises for the back of the body, the posterior chain, versus training the muscles on the front of the body, the anterior chain, in a two to one or even a three to one ratio to help balance things out. Posterior chain exercises involve the upper and lower back, the glutes, hamstring, and calves. Anterior chain exercises are things for the chest, hip flexors, quads, etc. For many of us, the front of the body is strong and tight, while the back is rather weak. 
Also remember that everything is connected. So a weak upper back and or tight hips and or even weak or tight hamstrings can easily lead to lower back pain. Let's start with an exercise for posture. Help strengthen the muscles of the upper back, shoulders, and neck. Place knees shoulder width apart to give you a good base. Start with your arms up and hands behind your head. Now lift both hands together away from your head. Extend your arms up while at the same time rotating your hands so your palms almost face up. Bring the arms around so your hands come together again just over your low back. Try to keep your hands off your back if you can before you purposely put them down. Next, let's do an exercise to strengthen the glutes and hamstrings. Start by laying on your stomach on the floor. Your upper body is fairly relaxed. You can place your hands by your shoulders or cross them under your chest, whatever is most comfortable. Now, extend your legs out with your feet as wide apart as possible. Then bend your knees to 90 degrees. Squeeze your glutes hard and try if you can to lift your thighs off the floor by as much as you can. The idea is to keep the thighs lifted throughout the entire exercise. I also suggest people include exercises to stretch out tight hip flexors, like the couch stretch. With one leg back and one knee up in front, you will then lift your body up tall and try to bring the hip on the back leg as far as possible, getting the best stretch through the quadricep and hip flexor muscles. You can also bring your arm up on that side to help increase the stretch. Try not to arch your back. You want to create the stretch through the hip. You may also want a mat or pillow under your back knee. Hold the stretch on each side from one to two minutes, two to three times per side. Hip mobility is important for a healthy back, so let's add in some hip swivels. Start in a seated position, legs out to one side, knees at 90 degrees on both legs. You can work through this exercise with your hands on the floor behind you for support, or hands out in front if you are more advanced. To work through the swivel, lift the inside knee up first, opening through the hip as much as you can until you cannot help but move the outside leg, until your body switches everything to the opposite side. Once in position going the other way, readjust to make sure both legs are in that 90 degree position and start the swivel again. It's important to sit as upright as possible and to really let the movement of the inside leg dictate the movement of the trail leg. Let's talk about a few core and back specific exercises. Cat cow. Keep your hands under your shoulder and your hips over your knees. Knees shoulder width apart. You are going to start by rounding your back and leading with the tailbone. Then form a neutral spine by tucking your tailbone underneath and slowly arching the whole back as if someone has a string attached to the middle of your spine. Once you've arched as much as you can, you can reverse the movement. Again, begin with the tailbone. Tip it up and slowly bring your belly button as close to the floor as possible. While you're doing this exercise, try to keep your neck in a neutral position. Don't tip it way back or look way down. Work through the reps slowly and with control. Dead bug. Start by laying on your back about a foot or so from the wall. Place your hands behind you on the wall and try to keep your elbows about shoulder width apart. This will give you some feedback and help you to keep your core muscles activated. You also want to try not to arch your back or even push it right to the floor while performing this exercise. Just a little activation and neutral spine is all that's needed. Next, you can either have your knees and hips bent to 90 degrees or you can have your legs straight while working through this exercise. The straight leg variation is harder because the lever is longer. Or you could start hard and as you fatigue or as you feel your back starting to arch, you move to the bent leg option. Whatever your start position, you will alternate one leg at a time and bring it to the floor, just touching your heel gently. Adding these exercises and stretches into your weekly routine will help to prevent back pain. And if you currently have back pain, see a doctor or physiotherapist to help you get started on the path to recovery. Remember that movement is medicine and that stress can be a very significant contributing factor. So don't forget to address that as well. For further reference, check out our back health playlist, link will be in the description, right here on YouTube, where you can watch Human 2.0 head physiotherapist go through an assessment with a back pain patient to get some ideas about what to do.